second to none in the critical problems of defense now facing the nation is how to produce in extraordinary quantities a light, tough, silvery metal known in one form or another to every man, woman, and child in America. Aluminum. Once precious and rare as gold, aluminum today is precious for another reason. This pig aluminum, first drawn off as molten metal from huge parts, soon will be transformed into the bodies and wings and parts of engines of the planes we are sending from our factories into the skies to build the air power of a nation racing now against time. Europe. On its map we read a grim lesson. Only yesterday the world's greatest producer of aluminum ore was France. Next came Hungary and Italy and Yugoslavia and Greece. Now over these vassal states we trace the march of conquest. For the conqueror no longer buys, he takes. But what of the West? In Dutch and British Guiana in South America lie vast and rich deposits of aluminum ore. In this hemisphere are the bauxite mines from which come three quarters of all the ore we use for United States production of aluminum. Nearly 50 American ships, some old, some new, and others building night and day in our shipyards, are hauling bauxite from the shores of our neighbor continent to the docks of our Gulf and Atlantic ports. Relentlessly, we must guard these vital lifelines of supply. Without bauxite, we have no aluminum. Without aluminum, we have no wings. Without wings, we have no defense. Out of the clamshell buckets, over conveyors to growing storage piles, the bauxite flows. Most abundant of all metallic elements in the Earth's crust, yet never is aluminum found in pure metallic form. And so, we must break the bauxite down. Shortages in our aluminum supply are the result primarily of the lack of plant facilities for producing the finished metal. In order to process the enormous amounts of aluminum we need, we are feverishly building new structures side by side with the old. We are throwing up factories where cornfields flourished a few months ago. We are bearing down on a construction job that in other times would be in itself a major achievement. When the bauxite has been ground to the proper fineness, it is prepared for mixing in chemical solution. At regular intervals, the operator weighs charges of bauxite and lime into which a stream of caustic soda liquor is carried. Process after process at high temperatures removes impurities and speeds the chemical changes. Red mud is washed away and the liquor flows on beneath through filter presses and coolers until eventually it is precipitated in great tanks five stories high. In these giant kettles and cauldrons, chemical solutions are working slowly to develop those qualities and properties which have helped make aluminum the outstanding 20th century metal. Aluminum combines lightness with strength. That's why it is indispensable for the manufacture of aircraft and has been used for countless purposes in industry. When we were building only a small number of aircraft, we could afford to make trains, trucks, and cooking utensils out of this valuable metal. In fact, a year ago, more than 85% of the aluminum we produced went into transportation and other civilian industries. At every 
final stage in the reduction process, we again are building. We are taking 20 years of normal plant expansion and crowding it into 18 months. Even this is not enough. So we are creating completely new plants, building from the ground up. We are trying to make effective every kind of mechanical, physical, chemical, structural, and financial facility we need to do the job. Finally, these long rotating kills heat the liquid to white hot temperatures to remove the water. As it dries into a fine white powder and is cooled, it has reached the end of the first stage of production. Here is alumina, ready to be conveyed or shipped to the pot mills. To change the powder alumina into the metal aluminum, the magic of electricity must be applied in the furnace. Millions of kilowatt hours are consumed. In this second stage of production, the vital necessity is cheap electricity in enormous quantities. Thus we find plants must be located close to the great hydroelectric developments of the nation. Faced with the shortage of power, we are building new dams on 24-hour shifts and we are adding new generating capacity wherever we can on those rivers whose vast energies already have been harnessed. The great public power developments in the Tennessee Valley and on the Columbia River at Bonneville and Grand Coulee are straining to capacity, or soon will be. Elsewhere, private plants and other systems are working close to peak loads, and still we need more power. The more we pile up metallic aluminum, the more we must push expansion of the plants to fabricate it. Here in one plant alone is a new rolling mill under construction, more than 2,000 feet in length, and itself only a part of a larger structure. From such a mill as this will come the rolled sheets worn by great pressure to thicknesses measured in thousands of an inch. In all its various forms, aluminum comes out of the northwest and southeast, and northeast and midwest and far west to supply the aircraft plants of America. Because we are building not dozens, but thousands and tens of thousands of airplanes, we are facing a shortage of aluminum. Nearly three-fourths of the total weight of an airplane is aluminum or aluminum alloy. Ours is a gigantic task. In 1939, we put 40 million pounds of aluminum into a military aircraft. Next year, we must put into aircraft and other military uses an estimated billion and a half pounds. Even these estimates of our military needs may be low, and they make no allowance whatever for filling civilian needs. But America must fly. Into these eagles of defense, we will put our old pots and pans and scrap, so that we can help make sure aluminum will not fail us in the crisis. The essential relationship of man to man, material to material, nation to nation, and continent to continent can be symbolized in the making of this fateful metal. For this, we now know. We must have aluminum to fly, and fly we must, high and far and fast.